everybody, welcome back to Everything Dogs YouTube channel. I'm Denise Mazzola. Today we are talking about trigger stacking and trigger stacking can happen to people and your dogs. And if your dog is reactive, if you're worried about aggression, um, you need to pay attention to this because this is, this is gonna make a big impact on your dog. Let me give you some examples first before we get started with our little demonstration we've got going on here. If I am, um, I have three daughters, and when they were younger, elementary school, whatever, if I were, I'm in New Hampshire, if I were driving in Boston where the streets are insane, if I were hungry, which means I'm hangry because I'm irritated and I'm hungry, and they started to scream in the back seat, I'd probably lose my mind all over them screaming and yelling in the car because I am what you're, I'm what's called trigger stacked. Being hungry is a trigger. Driving in a city I'm not familiar with is a trigger. And if I were tired, those would be three triggers. And then the fourth one, which pushes me over the edge, is they start screaming in the back seat. Okay? There's all kinds of stressors, right? I mean, we're under stress all, all the time, but there's also that saying that the straw that broke the camel's back, right? Like it's the little thing that maybe it happens at the end of the day that makes you go bananas. And, and, and you're thinking, wow. And afterwards, you might step back and go, okay, like I am super trigger stacked. Okay? Well, it can happen to your dog as well. And again, I'm going to give you examples of two different dogs because I think it's going to be an interesting contrast and you can understand what's happening. So we have two dogs in our family. We have Jubilee, who is a um, American Bulldog Terrier mix. She is what we call recovering reactive because she has been dog reactive. You could never walk her anywhere where you would see another dog or she would be the twirling dervish at the end of her leash. It was embarrassing. It was awful. It didn't give her breed a good name. It, there was just all sorts of things wrong with it. So Amy and I have worked a lot. Amy in particular worked with her to get her to not be reactive anymore. But she can still get trigger stacked. And then we have my dog, Gio, who's a lovely uh, four-year-old yellow lab. Yeah, there's stressors in his life, but he's not reactive to other dogs. He likes other dogs. He likes people. He's pretty much mellow. He's a mellow guy all around. So an example of trigger stacking with Jubilee, uh, no, let's just do Geo first. So we're going to do a little demonstration with our um, colored water. So this is Geo's cup, and we have purposely had it empty because he's not stressed when we go for a walk. He's super excited about going for the walk. He's not reactive. He's not worried about his environment in any way. So we didn't put any colored water in to start. And on our walk, we see a cat. So for Geo, he doesn't care about cats right? So I'm not going to do anything with this. Th these, this is like representing of the stress that's in this, this cat cup, if you will. But since it's not going to stress him out, I'm not going to put anything in there. Then we see a loose dog. This dog like runs right up to us, right? So he's friendly and all, but that might be a little stress for, for him because for any, any dog, having another dog run up to them would be stressful, right? So he gets a little stress for that. It's a little bit of a trigger. Then we go past a barking dog that's, maybe it's a dog that's being walked on leash and the dog is barking at us, right? So again, a little bit of stress there just because he, Geo's on a leash also, he can't get to that dog either, okay? So lastly is our neighbor dog whose name is Camden. Now Geo plays with Camden, so he likes him, right? So if we're walking back down the street after our walk and Camden comes running up to him, I'm going to say there's going to be a little stress because Geo won't be able to necessarily go and play with him, okay? But as you can see, like in this little demonstration, his cup isn't running over, right? That, that saying that there's, you know, my cup runneth over. Over there isn't. He's got some stress on that walk, but he's not trigger stacked, okay? He can, he could walk some more. He could see some more dogs. He could do some other things, uh, and he's not going to get trigger stacked, okay? So that's Geo, Mr. Mellow Guy. Now let's talk about Jubilee. So Jubilee, we've started with some water in her cup because she is a recovering reactive dog. She is, we work really hard. All of her walks, they're not walks, all of her walks are works because you're always working Jubilee if you're out with a, on a walk with her. And because she's a terrier, um, cats are really, um, pretty interesting to her. Like she has a lot of prey drive and she will go after a cat if given the option to. 
So the first thing we see is a cat. And so she sees it, we react quickly and don't allow her to uh, necessarily react to the cat, but that's gonna, that's gonna give her quite a bit of stress. She sees the cat, she gets all fired up about it, she can't chase him, she can't kind of, you know, fulfill her genetic need. We don't need to do that. Now she's recovering reactive and we're walking in the same loose dog, a dog we don't know, comes charging up, rawr, 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 barking at her. Woo! That probably could send her over the edge, right? She doesn't react, but we got a lot of stress there, okay? Loose dogs are the worst. I could probably overflow her cup on, on this one alone because that's a, that's a true story with her. Then we walk past a dog that's just being walked and this dog is barking, okay? So now she's had two triggers already, so it makes this one even harder for her. So we add more stress to her already filled cup, okay? So now she is teetering on the edge. There's a lot, she's, she started off a little bit of stress just because she's that recovering reactive dog. And now we add in Camden. So my dog, Gio over here, loves Camden. Runs over, plays with them, they chase each other, they play with toys, they have a great time. For a variety of reasons, Jubilee hates Camden. I don't like to use that word a lot, but it's a true story. Barks at him out the windows, goes ape crap over the site of Camden. So we're walking back down the street. Camden usually sits on his front yard and doesn't do anything. But on this particular day, he and the other dog in the house, which, which is tied out on a runner, they both charge at us. The other dog hits the end of his runner and doesn't continue on. Camden alone puts Jubilee over, uh, trigger stacks her so much that she'll overflow and have a huge reaction. But now, after all, the, all of these other things that have happened, the cat, the loose dog that ran up to her barking, the barking dog at the end of a leash, and now Camden is charging her, this alone, like, she overflows, totally and completely overflows, okay? Barks, carries on, we have to hold on to her by the collar, she's screaming, twirling dervish, it's just a thing, okay? That is an example of trigger stacking, that your cup will runneth over. For us sometimes, for people, it's oftentimes the little thing that tips us over. In this example, Again, Camden alone would be enough to tip over her, her genetic cup, but now it's even, it's even more so, okay? So how does this play out with your dogs? You need to be aware when they're overstressed, when they're, when they're reaching maximum capacity for their stress, when they've got trigger after trigger after trigger after trigger. This was just one walk, okay? So the next day, we didn't take Jubilee out on this particular walk. We went downtown where the dogs were all be leashed so we could work her program around leash dogs, but we weren't gonna see a cat, we weren't gonna have loose dogs running up to her, and the chance of a dog barking at her downtown, pretty low because just the dogs that are down there are not like that, okay? So trigger stacking, if your dog is already reactive, growling, biting, already has a propensity for aggression, you have what I call a low threshold. Think of thin ice. There's not a lot of padding there, right? A dog like Geo, his ice is super thick. He's got a lot of padding. I don't even know what would cause this dog to aggress, right? That's how much padding he has. But other dogs like Jubilee, they have thin ice. It doesn't take much for them to aggress. And then you add all these triggers and that ice just cracks and they lose it. Their threshold is gone. They're just, they could be reacting all over the place. So if you have a dog that uh, is weary about strangers and you're having a party, huge trigger for your dog because all of those people are coming into your, into your house. Um, reactive dogs we've talked about. Resource guarding dogs. If you're bringing in new toys, that's actually could, yeah, they're gonna like those new toys a lot, maybe, maybe too much, that it might trigger some more guarding. So think about trigger stacking. When you are doing things with your dog, when you're planning things and you're thinking about involving your dog in those, whether it's a good idea or not, and how much, how much trigger stacking have they had before this, how much trigger stacking are they gonna have after that? If you've taken your dog to the vet, then maybe you're not gonna go to, um, I don't know, a dog park, or maybe you're not gonna go meet your friend with her dog because the vet might be a big trigger for your dog, and then they're gonna have less of ability to cope, 
and then you could end up with a problem with other dogs. It just as an example, I'm not sure what all of your particular cases are. So think about trigger stacking, think about your own trigger stacking, to think about your dog's trigger stacking and how you can minimize that and recognize it when it's happening so that you can do something different. Um, one quick example in class, when we see a dog yawning, scratching, and maybe stretching, which are all stress signals, we know this dog is stressed, why don't you take the dog out, walk him around for a little bit. Sometimes it's just the environment and getting them out of the environment will help, and sometimes the dog might just need to go to the bathroom. All right, you guys, thanks for watching our little 10 minute tip on trigger stacking. See if you can apply it to your dog and make your dog's life a little bit better. Hit subscribe and hit the bell so you'll know when we upload another video. And I'll see you next time.